Hello everyone and welcome to this video. What we're gonna be doing today is I'm going to be giving you a complete product and app demo of our app that we've been working on, Goalpost. Goalpost has been submitted to the App Store and the Google Play Store for review and you should expect to see it in the coming weeks as accessible on the App Store and Google Play Store. So that being said, in this video, I'm gonna be doing a complete demo. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe. Um, we are going to a million. Um, if you haven't been following along, we have a series on our channel where I'm live streaming vibe coding an app until we make a million dollars. And I'm live streaming every day until we do that. Right now we're on day 10, but Goalpost was built in 10 days um, we're on day 10. Um, today is technically day 11, but I wanna share this demo with anybody that has not already um, watched the streams. And if you have watched the streams, then I wanna give you a refresher of the functionality, the UI, um, the architecture, and where we're at with the project. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna do a actual product demo. And then after the product demo, I'm gonna dig into the code a little bit, and I'm gonna show you guys how this project is actually structured, um, what I've done, to be able to make sure that the AI is able to build a scalable project. Um, basically what I've done is I've taken my programming knowledge and I've streamed it into Cursor and I've streamed it into everything that we've been doing and the project is scalable, um, the code is solid and it's ready to launch in the App Store. So let's get into it. Um, so the first thing when a user launches the app, um, so let's go over first and actually show you I'm gonna sign out and show you guys what the welcome screen looks like. So when you initially download the app, this is what you're gonna see. Um, you're gonna be able to create an account for free. So let's do that. Let's just totally walk through the process. So the first thing that you do is you it asks you what are your goals and you select uh, the different categories that you're focusing on in life. It asks you when you're most productive. So I say the morning and the afternoon. Um, then I, I go on and say uh, preferred session length. And what a session is, is it's a focus session. So if any of you are familiar with the book Deep Focus, this app is essentially built around um, a lot of the fundamentals that are outlined in that book of focusing and getting more out of your time. So what should we call you? BridgeMind. Go next, you create a username. I'm gonna do BridgeMind3, actually let's do four. Um, and then it asks you for an email or password, or you can authenticate with Apple and Google. Um, just for this, I'm gonna do uh, just this here. Create account. So the first thing that you see is the feed screen. And now that what the feed screen is, is the feed screen actually pulls in all the goals that other users on the app have publicly posted. Um, not all goals have to be public, but um, they can't. you can private your goals, but um, all the goals on the feed screen are essentially the same thing as, that you would see on X or TikTok or Instagram. It's people's goals that they're working towards. And you're able to scroll through all these so you can see here, this user has a goal to learn Spanish. I can see the progress. I can see um, the, the amount of hours per week that they're planning on focusing towards this goal. There's likes, saves, sharing. You can also click on this. And um, it turns out that this user's goal is actually completed. So you can see the little confetti effect there because the user has marked this goal as completed. So they may have not been using the app um, to be able to track their progress, but they have marked it as completed. But you can comment on these goals. So I'm just gonna say, great work learning Spanish. And uh, users can actually kind of have a comment section where people are able to hold each other accountable and keep each other motivated. Um, you're able to search people's goals and there's also a leaderboard. So there's a leaderboard on the app where you can see which user on the app is uh, uh, completing the most goals. So right now it's that Matthew M um, who had that goal completed. Right now we're just using our local data. So there's not a ton in here, but you can also see which uh, users have the longest streaks. Um, so let's go back out here. You can search users by their name. So if you have a friend on the app that you want to follow, you can find them here. Let's follow this guy and then you can go to their profile page. They have no public goals. You can message. You can see who their followers are. Here's um, another profile that I've created. The public goals that they've shared are make a million dollars. Two goals, two make a million dollar goals. <laughs> you can follow them. Um, so let's go back out. So there's a nice profile screen. Now, the next thing that I wanna show you is your personal profile screen. So when you go to your profile, you're able to edit your profile, edit all your information. You can create a bio on yourself. Um, 
pretty nice. You have your username, your email, your name. You can also upgrade to premium. So pretty much how the uh, goalpost is going to make money is that it's going to be totally free to download. But for users that want uh, unlimited access, they have to uh, unlock premium, which is just $4.99 a month. But in terms of you know your uh, investment, your ROI on that, I think that's fair because this is going to help you focus. It's going to help you set your goals and actually have them written down. It's going to help you uh, stay accountable. So I think people uh, will be willing to pay $4.99. That's kind of uh, normal in the app world. So here's some of the uh, features that you get when you upgrade to premium. So that's how the app's gonna make money. And I expect that we'll get quite a lot of subscriptions. Um, another cool thing, so let's go through and click this plus button. And what pops up is you can create a goal, create a new session or create a story. So let's do create goal. And this is where you actually create your goal. So one of my goals is to make a million dollars. Um, you're able to set a description. I am going to make um, all this money through um, building apps. So I'm gonna describe how I'm doing this. You can set it to private or public. So let's make it public. Choose category, I'm gonna do career, continue. Weekly commitment, I'm gonna set is 80 hours a week. Target date is um, December 31st continue and then it gives you a little quick summary and then you're able to create your goal. Um, what's nice is that as soon as you create your goal, you're able to share it um, with friends. So if you have any people that you wanna share the app with, you just click that and if you're on uh, Apple or Google, you'll uh, be able to share respectively. Let's go back to our goals page and refresh that and now you can see that our goal that we just created, make a million dollars, is populating here. Um, so the next thing that's pretty cool is that if you remember we set um, 80 hours per week that we want to work towards this goal. So how this works is you go here to the new session screen and what you're able to do is you're actually able to scroll and say instead of focus sessions, let's do a two hour session, let's say, and then you're able to click select goal and this pulls up all your goals that you have. So you're able to select if you have like 10 different goals, you're able to set focus timers towards specific goals and it's gonna track it all inside the app. So let's select this one and just click start. You have some nice controls down here, but right now we're not gonna wait two hours for this to complete. We're just gonna cancel it. So let's cancel that session, go back. And what you guys are gonna notice is if I refresh this, that session loads in. So the sessions are actually stored on your account as well. So let's say if I did complete that session, then it would be marked as completed. And then if you go here and you go towards your, um, your goal screen, you're able to actually keep track of all these sessions. And you have streaks, you have your minutes logged. I had zero minutes logged on that and I canceled the session, so I have zero. But if I had completed that, it would say two hours and then that bar towards 80 hours per week of progress would move that way, which is pretty cool. You're also able to edit your goals, obviously, if you need to make any changes, you can archive them, you can set them as private. All of that functionality is built in here. Um, and then let's go to a really cool feature that we built on stream, this goal post insight, our AI coach. So let's say plan my week to hit my goals and send this off. And what you're gonna notice is that it says planning your week, creating a structured plan each week is a great way to make steady progress towards your $1 million goal. Let's break it down to maximize your 80 hour work com week commitment. So what you notice is that this AI coach actually has access to the information that you've set. So um, if you set 20 goals, this AI coach actually has has access to all those goals. And not only does it have access to the goals, but it also has access to the sessions that you've worked towards each goal. So it's able to say, hey, this week, you know, you've worked 20 hours towards your million dollar commitment. Um, if you, if you uh, want to hit that commitment, you need to integrate, you know, four hours per day between these times. So um, this is gonna be really good for that if people like using AI to kind of talk out their goals. Um, and then the last feature is story. And this is kind of a work in progress. So I can't show it to you on this simulator because it's not compatible with React Native. And um, with that being said, let's now transition a little bit over to the technical aspects of the app. So I'm gonna just click here and we're gonna look at the code base for a bit. And uh, first of all, if you guys have not already liked and subscribed, right now is a great time to do so. Um, you can see that I'm putting a lot of work into the app and this is a journey and I'm sharing it along the way so that if you're interested in app development or software development or just pure entertainment or um, if you're new to programming, 
um, the, the field is totally changing and you know it would not have been possible to build an app like this in 10 days and I have a ton of experience with AI and programming and I think that uh, this channel is going to grow very quickly and it is growing quickly so if you haven't already liked and subscribed make sure you do that now um, and let's get right into this technical breakdown now so over here I'm just going to collapse all of the files here so you guys can take a, a deep look at kind of the uh, project architecture so um, take note of three main points. So you can see a database right here. You can see an API right here. And then you can see the app right here. So the language that we're using is we're using JavaScript. Technically, TypeScript is what you're using. So um, TypeScript is another layer up on top of JavaScript that um, kind of improves JavaScript because it integrates typing. So one drawback of using JavaScript is uh, that it doesn't have typing. So TypeScript kind of has made JavaScript way better. And that's why you've seen Node grow in popularity so much. So this database directory here, um, we'll start there. So if I go to source here, on the back end, I'm using TypeScript for our, our database. So it's Postgres, but I'm using something called TypeORM. So you can see here TypeORM, and I'm importing all of these um, decorators from TypeORM. And in TypeORM, you're actually able to define and create your database in the code itself. And any changes that you make to these entities, um, you can actually compile the migrations yourself. So watch this. So if I go here and I remove title, for example, from the goal, right? So if I've, re I've removed title, all I need to do now is go to the database and run npm run migration generate. And then it's going to ask me um, to basically name the migration. I'm going to say remove goal title. And then what it does is it actually is able to compile the migration that's needed in this directory here. So here are all my migrations. You can see that there's like, you know, 15 of them or whatnot. But you can see this one, it actually is able to um, automatically check our entities and check our database. And what it does is it able, it's able to pull in and say, what are the differences between the entities that are defined in the code and the actual database that's running on the, on the user's machine? So it takes a look at the database and then it takes a look at the entities and it says, hey, uh, the entities no longer have this goal column or this uh, title column in the goal entity or the goal table. Let's make sure that we drop that. So it does that automatically. So I'm actually going to revert that because I do want my goals to have titles. So let's just go here, um, do undo on that. So type ORM on the back end or the database um, and TypeScript is great. It makes database management really easy. And then in the API, I'm using Nest. So Nest is similar to Google's Angular if you're uh, familiar with the module architecture approach. So um, in our Nest API, we have uh, wait, this is the React Native API. Let's get uh, the API up. So here, our source directory, we have a common, which just has all of our common uh, functions and whatnot. We have our entities, which are the same entities that we use in the database. And those are the type ORM entities. And what this does is the same thing as the database. So instead of having to write all the SQL queries, we're actually able to um, type all of our database queries and use type ORM to make all of those, uh, those queries, which is really nice. No SQL basically. Um, and then in the modules directory, this is actually where most of the features are held for the app. So uh, for example, um, let's go to goals, right? So goals, if I open up that module, what you see is there's a controller, a module, and then a service, and then your respective testing files. And then there's also DTOs. So for example, you go into the DTOs and this defines what it looks like, the structure of the API um, for that DTO. So when I'm creating a goal, this is all the different fields that I need to make sure the front end populates and sends to the back end. And then in the controller, we import those DTOs and and we actually set up all the usage for them. Um, and then in the service, that's, that's where most of the bulk, bulk functionality is. So our controller, it takes a request, it then sends it off to the service, returns the service, returns the code. Um, so a really good structure here. And then the most important part of a Nest project is then all these modules get imported into the main app module. So the main app module, you can see imports all of our feature modules. And it's just really nice. I like being able to have a code base that's scalable. And that's what we've done here. So the last thing is the Time AI app. Um, that's what we refer to it internally as, Time AI. But this is a React native application. And um, what that means is that you can see here, if we go up a little bit, you can see Android and iOS. And what React Native does, and specifically we're using Expo, as you can see, 
Expo is similar to Next.js on top of React, but Expo um, in the React Native world is amazing. You can use the EAS CLI so that you can deploy code from just your computer. Uh, I can literally, using the EAS CLI, I can deploy updates from uh, my computer to, I can deploy the builds to EAS, Expo Go, or not Expo Go, but Expo the uh, dashboard. And then from there, I'm able to deploy to the iOS app store and the Google Play store respectively. So I do it all through the EAS CLI. So it's really nice. Um, but here you just have your standard uh, React Native app. So all the screens, there's a screen directory. So for example, that goal screen is defined right here and it has all of our goals. But this is a big project at this point. You can see that you know this file is um, 462 lines long. This one is 800 lines long. And once again, you know, just to reaffirm this, if you guys um, don't understand, it's like we did this in 10 days. Um, we built all this in 10 days. And the only reason that we were able to do that is through the use of AI. And AI is making programmers much more productive. So if you can learn how to, how to integrate some of these workflows into your programming processes, you can get a lot more stuff done. And um, AI is getting to the point now where uh, GPT-5 can program better than I can if I just sat down and started typing. So by using the AI, you're able to go way faster. You're able to code way better. Um, I'm a big fan of it, but uh, the React Native app is a huge project, but it's just your typical React Native app. You have a services directory, you have API endpoints. So here's where I'm integrating with the Nest API. I've defined all of the API endpoints here. You can see that's 104 lines. So it's probably around 90 API routes, maybe 80 API routes. So it's a pretty big project. And then all the services are defined here. So all of the DTOs, the enums, the structures, the interfaces, they're all defined in this file. And then we extend the base service and make requests to our API. So let me know if you guys have any more questions in the comments section below. If you've watched the whole video, thanks for sticking around. I'm really excited about this app and I appreciate you guys watching. So uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and join in the journey. See you guys.